Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, unit 5, lesson 8, project 2. Before we look at that second part of this lesson, we're on part 1 because it has the app running in entirety. Let's go ahead and look at this just to see how it works. When I click run, I can see shapes were loaded to the screen and I have three buttons at the bottom. Let's go ahead and click colors. When I do that, it changed the colors and it also played a sound. Let's choose locations. This time it moved my shapes to a different part of the app. And then let's go ahead and click shapes. We can see that the shape changed to something different. And if I click this a few more times, we can see that the shapes change. One other thing to note is that the background changed when I ran the app. Notice it had this white screen, but when I click run, it went ahead and loaded a background in. Before you begin, I want to encourage you to look at the activity guide just to make sure that you are prepared to run through this project. The instructions are pretty simple. Build the lock screen maker app using the activity guide to help you plan. When you're done, submit your work. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create on clicks for each of these buttons. We're on the UI controls. We'll go ahead and drag three on clicks to our workspace. Our on clicks colors button, locations button, and our shapes button. On click for this is fine. Originally, when I was planning through this app, one of the things that I noticed on the other screen was that it played sounds when it was clicked. We're eventually going to create a function for each one of these on clicks, and I was going to add the sound within that function, but that wouldn't have been right only because the sound only played when the button was clicked. We're going to call the function as soon as the app is run, and if we do that, it's going to play that sound. So we actually want to add the sound within the on click. So we're going to go ahead and click this play sound. I believe this is the sound. So we'll select that and click choose. And we're actually just going to copy and paste this into the other on events. And we'll click show blocks. Once we get to the point of creating our functions, we're going to have to call our functions for each one of these on event clicks. But we'll wait to add that until we've created the function. Let's go ahead and add some comments to the code. I'm going to go ahead and copy this comment for each of my on clicks. When we finish building this app, these comments might be a little bit generic, so we might need to update them in the future. And then I'm also going to separate these on clicks just so visually it's a little bit easier to look at on this screen. Let's go to begin creating a function. The first function that I'm going to create is for the shapes. We'll call this function random shapes. This function needs to grab one of the icons in this list and then assign that image to each one of our icons. Something that we should note is the naming convention of these icons. We can see that the first icon is icon 0 and it runs all the way to icon 19 and that's going to be important. We're going to use the skills that we learned earlier in this lesson and apply that. So let's go ahead and grab a random icon from this list. To do that, we're going to assign a variable. We'll call this random icon. Then that's going to equal our icons list, which is the name of this right here, which contains each of the icons. I'm going to go ahead and do two brackets and open and closed. And then I'm going to click show text just so I can drag this math into the brackets. Our random number needs to be between index zero and we have eight different icons within this list. I could type in the number seven here because the eighth icon is in index seven, but best practices would say to use the variable tool called list.length. The list here would be icons list. And we want length minus one. 
Now, the reason that this is best practice is because right now this has eight icons, but let's say we're gonna add to it in the future. This would allow us to continue to use this line of code regardless of how large or how small the list got. We need to go ahead and add a for loop. Var i equals zero is good. We wanna change this number here from four to 20 though. Remember each one of these icons is listed zero to 19. And so what we want this to do is starting at icon zero, we want it to run through this for loop until it gets to the number 20. And once it gets to that number 20, it's gonna check out because we don't need it to look for any other icon. And it's doing that each time it runs through, it's adding one to the variable i. So within this, we wanna to go to the UI controls. We'll do set property. What we want here is icon plus one. This needs to be image. And we don't want this link. What we do want is the variable we just created, random icon. Let's go ahead and call this function at the top of our program. We can see that it works, that's awesome. Let's keep building our app. The next function that we wanna create is for our colors. So we'll click function, drag that below. We'll call this random color. We did not comment out this function at the top, so we will need to do that later. Immediately, we're gonna to wanna to jump in and change the color of our shape, just because that's what we're thinking about. But really what we should do first is we need to set the property in the background. So we're gonna to go to UI controls. We're gonna use set property. The property here is going to be for the home screen because that's the name up at the top. For this, we wanna select background color. Here is where we're gonna go ahead and assign a random RGB color. So I'm gonna click and drag RGB over to the right. We're gonna to go to the math function because we wanna select random number for each of these. Something to note is this fourth element within RGB is for the alpha color. By default, it's set at 0.5. This might work for us. We might need to make it smaller or we might need to make the alpha larger. Just depends on what we see. Within our random number, we wanna choose the value of zero to 255. RGB is an eight bit value. And so that's why we stop at 255. So when this function is called, the first thing it's gonna do is set the background color. Now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and do another for loop. var i equals zero is good. We want to change this to be less than 20 again so that it runs through the entire list until it gets to that icon 19. We're going to set property again, so we'll go to the UI controls. The property here is going to be icon plus i. I'm realizing that on our screen, we should have seen 20 different icons, and that's because right here, I put one instead of I within our random shapes function. So you should be careful when going through your things. If I click run again, notice that all 20 icons load. That's a mistake on my end, and it's easy to do. So I just wanna caution you to be careful as you are typing in things. For this, we wanna choose icon color. We're gonna use the same RGB element. Let's go ahead and copy this so that we don't have to retype it. Now that we're feeling comfortable with the toolbox, sometimes you wanna think smarter, not harder. Both of these numbers being 0.5, again, might cause us issues and we might need to adjust one or both. So keep that in the back of your mind. All right, so this should set up a different color for each one of our icons. Let's go ahead and call it at the top. Perfect, we see the background color was loaded and each one of the icons was assigned a different color value. And we can see that that background color is a little strong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this from 0.5 to 0.2. And maybe that won't be so domineering in the background. Let's go ahead and comment out our two pieces of code.
let's go ahead and create one more function. We'll call this random location. On the original app screen, one of the things that I noticed was that not all of the icons were the same size. Some things to note that we're gonna do within this function is we're gonna change the size of the icon in addition to the location. So we need to do two different things. Within this function, we wanna go ahead and use the for loop. I equals zero is good. We want to change again this 4 to 20 so that the for loop stops running once it gets to the number 20 for the variable i. Within this, we need to go ahead and create a variable. This variable we'll call size. We're going to go to the math section because we need to assign random numbers. We're going to use this number to set our width and our height of the icon. So let's go ahead and go small with 25 and we will do 250 for the largest number. These numbers might not be good. We might need to change it after we run the app. Within this, we need to go ahead and go to the UI controls. We're gonna set property for both the width and the height. We want this to be icon plus I, and we'll do the same here. Width for the first one's perfect, but what we wanna do here is size. So it assigns a random number. We'll change this from width to height. And again, same thing, size from that random number. In addition to our width and our height, we also need to change the location within the app screen. So let's go ahead and click and drag over two more set properties. Now, as I look through this, I can see the Y goes all the way to over 400. So we might set our Y at 380. And I can see that this X runs from zero to a little over 300. Let's go ahead and do icon plus I for both of these. We're going to change our X and our Y. We're going to go and use the math random number again. I don't think that we necessarily want to put the X all the way at zero. So maybe start at 30, and we'll do 270. Now, if you want part of the shape to run off the screen, you could actually add a negative number or a number that's above this 320 that we have. We'll do 30 again, and for this, we'll do 380, and we'll comment out this code. Let's go ahead and call the function to see if it works. We call that random location. And we can see each one of our icons was placed in a different location on our screen. Something else that we need to do is we need to put these function calls within our on clicks. I'm just gonna copy and paste this in. Let's reset our app. I can see that by accident when I copied and pasted that I put the random shapes within the random shapes function and so it's just looping. That's an issue. Let's go ahead and click and drag this up. It seems so simple and I honestly am feeling a little bit uh, frustrated with myself that I did that. But I leave these errors in the video just so that you can see nobody's perfect. You're going to make mistakes. It's okay. You just have to troubleshoot. This app wasn't so easy to build. It really made you think through some of the things that you learned throughout this unit. If you use this video to walk you through the tutorial, I want to encourage you to go to the version history, reset the project, and try and rebuild this. I know I say this all the time. The purpose of this project is not for a grade. The purpose of this project is for you to learn and feel comfortable using the skills that you learned within this lesson. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click finish.